Good afternoon, everyone. Before we get into uh, the formal part of this program, we think it's really, really important to hear from the young people, from some of the young people who participated in the Mayor's Book Club uh, this summer. Uh, we have um, this event today where we're celebrating the culmination of the first part of the Mayor's Book Club, which was summer reading for sixth to eighth grade students. Some of them read I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai, and some of them read The Crossover by Kwame Alexander. I think you two read The Crossover by Kwame Alexander. So in this initial pilot, over 600 young people in our city picked up free books from uh, the Newark Public Library from all eight branches uh, all over the city as well as here at the main library. So again, before we start the formal press conference, we're going to have just a little chat with uh, two young people from Newark and Mayor Baraka. And I'm going to ask you guys to please uh, introduce yourselves, your name, your school, your grade. Hi, my name's Akila. Um, I'm going to I'm at university and I'm going to the eighth grade. Hi, my name is Isaac. I go to MKA and I'm going to the seventh grade. Thank you. So first I just want to say thank you for participating in the uh, Mayor's Book Club this summer, y'all gave me some additional stuff to read, and I, I don't have enough, but that was, you know, uh, I, we're gonna talk a little bit about Kwame Alexander, who I actually know, by the way, uh, and uh, the, the book crossover. So the, the first kind of question I wanted to ask, was it difficult for you to read it uh, in the, not difficult in terms of like, was it hard, but difficult in terms of how it was written for you? You know, cause I know it's written almost like, uh, what you say? written like poetry or, or hip hop, you kind of, but it's, it's one story in a poem, right? So what do you think about that? Well, I actually like the format of how they put it. Um, the way that it's like certain stories and they have uh, big letters to express and small letters to show, okay, emotion or things like that. I, I really like how they put it together. When you say big letters to express and small letters emotion, I, I might have missed that part, man. Help me out with that. All right, so in the beginning where they all talked about the two brothers, right. it was like um, Filthy McNasty and it had big letters. And so like to kind of express how good he was in basketball. Yeah. And you know, kind of with small letters to see, you know, how How it, be, how it basically, um, how it basically, yeah, it basically keeps its emotion. Okay. What, do you, what did you think about it? Um, I thought it was more fun to read. I, like, that made it more fun with the onomatopoeia. Also, like, wait, the wait, a minute, what, 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 wait a minute, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is onomatopoeia? I've been out of school for a long time. Help <laughs> Onom me out. Onomatopoeia is just basically sound effects like boom, pow, swish. Yeah. Slam. So whenever he did like a dunk or anything, he would go swish or slam, or the the ball went in the hoop. Wh whoosh. Yeah. I, j I just enjoyed that. That was fun. For yeah, me. it made it more interesting for you to get in, get engaged. Uh, so what 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 do you, what do you think the story was? What he was trying to express? What was it about? What was he talking about? Um, he was first, first he was talking about him and his brother's basketball career, and then when his brother got a um, a, a girlfriend, he kind of felt left out. And then other problems in his life sur surfaced and he kind of felt lonely. And he just, he was going through life alone and he didn't, he wasn't used to that. Could you relate to that in some way in, 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 in some of the stories that he was saying, telling there? Um, I mean, yeah, sometimes, you know, you kind of feel lonely, but it's, it's important to know that you have people around you, even though they have, even though they have a girlfriend like Josh had. Um, it's important to know, all right? This is just a time and a period, and you gotta look, gotta look at the wide, the big picture. The big picture, that's right. I, I want to talk a little about the relationship between him and his brother. I thought that that was interesting, uh, and how he 
express that relationship with him and his brother in there. What did you think about that? You thought that was important to him? Was it, what did, was it, did it affect his life or? So I think the relationship did affect his life because um, they went to school together, they played basketball together, and they lived together. So when he got a girlfriend, you started seeing him less, less, more or less, even though they lived together. And then when, um, when he um, when he hit him, the, the, the tension, it was really thick tension. So, and so it was like, the relationship, it was, it was still there, but it was more or less. It was a, a less version. What do you think about it? Um, I think their relationship, I, I liked, okay, their relationship, they were very close, because, not, only because, not only just because they were siblings, but also they were twins, and twins are, see, twins are mostly closer than other siblings. And they, they, like he said, they did do everything together, and they were always together. And that just like, and then when he got a girlfriend, and he left him. He kind of was like, "What am I supposed to do now? I have like, I'm basically alone." So, what was the conflict in the story? What was the conflict there in the story? The girlfriend. The girlfriend was the conflict. <laughs> why, 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 why did she become the conflict? I think that he was jealous, but also I think that he kind of liked her because he. Um, there was one part in the story where he pretended to be his brother because his brother asked him to. Right. And then he he started kind of flirting with the girl. Right. And after that, he kind of called, made names for her and stuff. I think that he kind of liked her. That, that's interesting. Um, you, you agree with her that that's the conflict? Yeah, I okay. agree. That's the, so wait, is, there, is there a turning point in the story? You know a turning point. What, is there a turning point in the story? Well, the turning point is when, uh, when, when they start to realize that they're, they're, they're still brothers, they're still twins, no matter what, they, they'll come together. And when they start apologizing for what he did, you know, in the beginning when he cut his dreads, right, that was right. kind of funny. Um, but, um, you know, when he got his hey, when he Why, got his why do you think he cut those dreads off? What was he trying to do? Um, so, in the beginning, it was like, um, I forgot what it was, but in the locker room, right, right. it was like a, a bet. And his brother got to cut off one of his dreads. Instead, he cut off a patch. And then when he got home, he had to cut off all of his hair. Right. But, but go ahead. And what, what were you saying before that in terms of the turning point? I, I, I didn't mean to, to interrupt you there. Go ahead. But, um, like, they I've, he was upset because he lost his dreads. But after a while, he was the one who was, ups he was, the one who was upset. But then he apologized. And his brother apologized. But then when he got a girlfriend, um, when he got a girlfriend and he got hit when they were playing basketball, then he was upset, the brother. So it's kind of, you know, apologizing and, and apologizing and reestablishing that relationship. You agree with that? That's the turning point? Anything you want to add to it, though? I also think the turning point was when his father was in the hospital or when he found out he was sick. Because after that, he kind of was like, wow, this is real. After his father passed away, he was like, because at the very end, him and his brother kind of made up. They kind of just, right. they did what their father did, even though they, like before he died, they were trying to make 50 free, throw, free throws and he couldn't do it. But after he died, him and his brother did it together and they, they did what they thought that they couldn't after their father died. So I feel like that was the turning point. Okay, so that's actually different than what he said, but it's close, right? So the, the turning point is when they had the basketball, when the, when the father passed, and, and you think the father passed them, passed, made them feel or think what? Well, they were obviously sad, but they also, at first, Jordan, the brother, uh, he was kind of neglecting bas basketball, and Josh was being pushed towards it. And I think at the end, Jordan lost that neglect and decided, I mean, yeah, Jordan lost that neglect and decided to play with his brother. But what did you think when, when the father passed, right? Did you think that had, did they begin to look at what they were doing with each other differently when the father was no longer around? Or did you, do you think that they had no impact on their relationship at all? I feel like it made them closer because before, the, before his father passed, they were, their relationship was kind of strained, but at the same time, like they were still brothers, but it was kind of strained. And after his father passed, they got closer and they decided that, well, without saying anything, they decided that they were gonna start doing things together again. And then they began apologizing later, right? Yeah. 
I, I appreciate you. You guys, first, you, you, you actually read it, and, um, <laughs> and uh, you, did, you did an awesome job. Very brilliant, brilliant minds you have. You know, I'm excited about the prospects of, of what, what's in store for you. I think those kids better watch out in school when y'all get there. Did a great job. I appreciate both of you. Thank you for uh, allowing me the opportunity to interview you. I get interviewed all the time, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to y'all. Be beautiful. Keep reading. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us here this afternoon on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. I'm really pleased that you uh, chose uh, on such a glorious day to be here at the library for this uh, important event uh, for Newark Reads and the Mayor's Book Club celebration. Uh, we're really pleased to be part of this initiative. Uh, as I hope you saw uh, throughout the library, uh, the library is all about building community and bringing people together. Uh, on any given day, if you walk into the library, especially these days, uh, you'll literally see hundreds, if not thousands, of people uh, actively making use uh, of our library facilities, both this main library and then also the branches that we have around the city. As part of the Mayor's Book Club, uh, we, as a proud partner of the Mayor's Book uh, Club, the library this year distributed over 600 copies of I Am Malala and the Crossover to Newark Youth. We also ho hosted many summer programs and provided free lunches as well throughout the summer based uh, on the books as part of our summer reading challenge. I want to thank all of our partners, uh, particularly Mayor Baraka and the city, uh, and his chief education officer, Tony Richardson, uh, for their ongoing support of the libraries. And I also want to recognize the contributions of many of our partners, some of who are here uh, with us today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Kalina Berryman from the Abbott Leadership Institute, who's here with us. Uh, and also Ron Chalusen from the Newark Trust for Education. Thank you. I also want to recognize uh, the contributions from our community partners whose support has enabled us to take an idea and deliver it to all of our neighborhoods and the families throughout Newark. The visionary partners uh, include Panasonic, the Newark City of Learning Collaborative, Newark Board of Education, United Way of Essex and West Hudson, uh, and Audible as well. And we have uh, Audible here with us this afternoon too, so thank you. I have to say, I don't believe that any other city in New Jersey at the moment is uh, spearheading this type of community partnership to address family literacy. So I hope that Newark can once again be a standard that others look up to and follow in our footsteps. With that, I want to thank you all again for coming out to support this fantastic initiative. And if you would, please uh, give a warm welcome to Newark's Chief Education Officer, Tony Richardson. Thank you. Again, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Antoinette Richardson, Chief Education Officer in Mayor Baraka's uh, Office of Comprehensive Community Education. And uh, although Jeffrey has thanked everyone, I want to take a second and really thank Jeffrey, his team, and the Newark Public Library for being such uh, wonderful partners. Although the library <laughs> is a part of the city, let me tell you, they don't have to do this and the way, that, um, the way that we work together is just phenomenal. So Jeffrey, thank you very much. So today, um, we heard from some phenomenal young people about one of the books in our summer reading. Just want to take uh, a second and uh, not neglect the other book, I Am Malala, which hundreds of students in the city also read this summer. And just to remind us of what that book is about uh, for a second, because it's about a young lady, and I'm sure you're familiar with the story, who was shot in the face by the Taliban in Pakistan because of her uh, belief and her activism in fighting for education uh, for girls, against people who do not want girls to go to school. So uh, both of those books are still available. Both books are still available. They're focused uh, for readers from sixth to eighth grade. It doesn't mean a fifth grader can't read them, doesn't mean an adult can't read them, but we focused on sixth to eighth grade this summer. And again, those books, we still have copies available at all of the libraries. 
But today, in addition to culminating our summer reading, we are here to announce the next step in the Mayor's Book Club. And the next step in the Mayor's Book Club is a high school to adult selection. That selection, our fall selection, is Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. And we're focused here on high school, college, and adult readers. You don't have to be registered in a school. I said high school, college, and adult readers. So everyone in this room who is of high school age, college age, hopefully in high school or college, but anyway, and any adult in the city is welcome to participate in the Mayor's Book Club Fall Selection. And those of you who were smart enough to be here today will get your copy right here today. And anyone uh, who hears about this or is watching, you can come to any branch of the North Public Library and pick up your book. And I'm just gonna read you a quick review. Among the numerous reviews of the book, Americana, you will find this review by NPR. It says, a knockout of a novel about immigration, American dreams, the power of first love, and the shifting meanings of skin color. It's a marvel of skin construction and imagination. So that should whet your imagination and hopefully help to motivate you to participate in our reading of Americana uh, this fall. And this is it in English. And this is it in Spanish. And for people like me, this is it in large print. And we have all of those available for you today. And I think it's really important to note that we have all of these available because it is also reflective of our mayor's uh, understanding of the need to serve all populations in our city. So, we urge everyone here today and everyone who hears this message to get on board the Newark Reads train. Newark Reads is a literacy coalition in the city. The Mayor's Book Club is the first pillar of that literacy uh, coalition. In the fall, there will be fireside chats with Mayor Baraka about Americana. And in the spring, guess what? There will be the announcement of a new book. So in the spring, there will be another Mayor's Book Club selection that you will be able to get again for free by simply walking into any Newark Public Library. So we urge everyone to participate in reading and discussion of this book and other books, to join with your friends and your co-workers in reading the Mayor's Book Club selections and other books as we become a city uh, and a community of active readers engaged in uplifting our city with civic and civil conversations about the pressing issues of our times. Thank you very much, and I now present to you again our mayor, Mayor Raz J. Baraka. Thank you. I, I wanna first thank Tony uh, uh, she's doing an awesome job in making sure we get this thing uh, uh, actually happening. We've been talking about it for a long time, so I'm excited to see not only is it happening, but I'm more excited that those young people read. I want to give them young people another round of applause, please. They're very brilliant kids. And the reason, reason I, I want to do that, obviously, because you know our young people don't usually get highlighted for their brilliance and uh, their, their opportunity uh, uh, to kind of engage uh, literacy like that. And that, that was awesome. Not only uh, did they read the book, we found out that they know some literary devices, they, <laughs> they understand uh, plot and, and, and conflict and, and all those other kind of things. So it was awesome uh, uh, to get them to uh, read and, and talk about what they read. But what we're trying to do is not only engage literacy across the city, and make sure families and, and people are reading, but we wanna do it in a diverse way, way right? So we have Crossover, which is a, a, a kind of hip hop novel, if you will, 
uh, really poetry, uh, you know, written about two uh, young African-American boys uh, in a community uh, playing basketball and their conflict that they're having with one another and their family. Then we have this uh, book about a young Palestinian girl uh, who uh, uh, had a serious conflict with trying to make sure uh, that young girls had an opportunity uh, to actually read and go to school and learn. Uh, and that, and, 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 and in, in the context of a larger political struggle that's happening there and around the world at the same time, uh, and the bravery and the courage uh, that this young girl actually had uh, to fight for her ability to learn and to grow. Uh, and so I thought it was an awesome uh, opportunity for us to read, but to read about something that I think is incredibly relevant today. The, the adult novel, uh, Americana, is uh, about a Nigerian uh, a, a young lady, right? About a, a Nigerians who move out of, uh, leave Nigeria in a, in a time uh, where there's conflict in Nigeria and find a way uh, to London and the United States and begin to deal with the complexity of, of trying to grow up and, 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 and make a living, I should say, in a place in the U.S. where there's racism and in London with the, the whole, uh, you know, anti-immigrant uh, kind of feeling that's going on and, and them and, and finding love and, and growth and into intellectualism and all of that uh, in the same time. So I thought those are good opportunities for us to engage what's happening around the world and here in a large kind of political and social context and at the same time, read. So that's awesome. And I, I, would, have, I would suggest, I know we said high school kids and college and adults, but I think some of our babies can get a hold of this text too. Those two young folks that were up here, I think they can read this. What y'all think? I think they're prepared for this. I think they're incredibly prepared. So don't feel, and I'm saying that because I, I want you to feel like there's only books for elementary kids and there are books for adults. There's no such thing as elementary kid books and adult books. I read those two books that you read, and, and I'm reading this book now. So uh, you engage the book on a level you think you can engage it at, right? You want to read all kind of material. There, there's no adult book. And when I was a kid, people used to make us believe that in school, that these books are for adults uh, and these books are for children. Uh, no. Some, some of the adults, uh, the content that's there, they're struggling with the content as well. So I want you to feel like, and it's for the kids, and I want you to feel like you should be able to grab a hold of that book and read it and struggle with it as much as you possibly can and get help uh, with reading it because it improves your capacity to read and your capacity to understand uh, the material. It's like lifting weights, right? Got to got to stay at it. Can't You can't like just lift the weight that you're comfortable with. You have to go above that weight and lift sometimes weights that are heavier for you, right? So that way you make sure you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And you want to take that analogy and use it in terms of reading as well. So I'm excited about it. I can't wait to have the fireside chats, or Tony's words. Can't wait to have the, the fire. I don't know if we're going to really be by any fire, but I can't wait to have the discussions about the book. And uh, we have some really, really, really good books uh, that we're going to introduce uh, to the public. So uh, let's get reading. Thank you for being here today.